Hey, so I want to do a video on a specific subject which has to do with the engine mount and uh, what modifications you really should be doing to it to move the engine back an inch and a half. And I'm going to go over why. It's not required. It is some people do it, some people don't, but I'm going to say it is required. Anyway, I'm actually going to show all the videos I took along the way as I was thinking it through and came up with different ideas. I'm going to show you what I ended up doing and I'm also going to add a few notes along the way and there are a few things I got as gotchas to look out for. So anyway, I hope it helps you out. Uh, I would say that if you are going to do an LS swap in a Porsche that this is a step that is absolutely required to do. So don't skip it. Um, that's just my opinion. Do what you like. Also, in how I did everything, uh, you may decide to go a different way. There are actually a few ways to skin the cat. I am gonna talk about that a little bit at the end of all the different options that are out there, but uh, big shout out to everybody on the Swap Porsche uh, community in Facebook. Uh, lots of different ideas came from there, and uh, I took inspiration on how I did it from there. So anyways, huge shout out to, to everyone in that group. So do check them out if you're gonna do it. There's a lot of uh, help and resources there. Anyways, let's get going from the very beginning. All right, let's talk about the motor cross member brace thingy bobby. So as discovered, if you don't modify the transmission mount, the engine is to the rear. Uh, it's doable, but kind of sucks. So people on the forum are helping me out. If I just post a video for video's sake, and you guys can kind of correct me as I go. Um, anyway, ah, sounds like these holes here have to be notched out an inch and a half, which that's a big notch for that one. For both of them, that's a big notch. So that's an inch and a half on those ones apparently, so that it can go forward. So you gotta notch it that way, because it's gonna go that way. Now, the cross brace is the fun one. And here's my theory. My theory is if I flip this left to right, the other way around, will it work? that way. I don't know if it's going to support it properly or if it's going to conflict with anything because all the bends are a certain direction. I don't really know. Maybe you guys have an opinion. Uh, I'm going to mark the floor with the two points, one down here in the stock location and then one down after I flip it, which is too hard to do when I'm holding the phone, and I'll measure the distance and we'll see if maybe that would be a thing that would work. Okay, so the cross brace isn't there anymore, but and the reason is is there's this little tab, lock tab that's on there that I just didn't feel like cutting off until I know for sure what I'm doing. But I was able to kind of like hold it with both hands. So if we look at the gap, that's exactly, uh, give or take, an inch, inch and a quarter, maybe plus an eighth. So just shy of an inch and a half. So that actually might work. Okay, so yeah. Uh, first note, uh, you cannot flip the bracket. Uh, the way the bracket is designed, it will hit the transmission, uh, so you cannot get it perfectly vertical at all. Uh, you'd have to prefabricate the bracket, and if you're going to do all that, you might as well just cut the ears off and do the welding or do whatever else like everybody else has done. So no is the answer on that one. I'll save you the trouble of trying to figure it out yourself. So one thing you have to do is you have to relocate the mount brackets and there's uh, a stud that comes out. And so that stud can be moved back to a mount, mount point, which I believe is for the Tiptronic transmission. So let's move that. And just to confirm, the head of that stud is seven millimeters. So let's move it. Okay, now you can see the studs in the new bracket. You will notice, or the new bolt spot, sorry. You will notice that the hole is narrower. So, Here's where the debate rages. Looks like Chavis, he says you have to cut the uh, mounting bracket and weld them in the new place. Other people say just grind the hole out a little bit and you're good to go. So I'm going to mount up the bracket unmodified first and see where things line up. So after a bunch of trial and error, it does work. You can just notch it and it will fit. The other thing I did do is I did shave back a bit of this lip so it's a little easier for me to get in and out. 
based on where the transmission kind of was with the LS in it, um, there's still a bend there, so it still has some strength in it. So anyway, I don't think that's the end of the world. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is the wash, or the, sorry, the nut has quite a large kind of washer fixed on it, and uh, it does easily cover that area. But I think what I'm going to do is, I am gonna end up welding a little bit on the outside there, um, on this side. I'm gonna weld a little bit on here just to put a little bit more meat there so the nut has a little bit more to hold on to. I think that's probably the smarter thing to do, although probably it would just be fine like this. I mean, it's the sum of its parts. There's another huge mounting bracket that goes on it as well. So, you know, this is just another piece of the pie, but I have it off, why not? Now, because I'm welding up a piece on there, one would say, why didn't you just cut and weld it? Um, yeah, fair enough. I mean, maybe that was the better way to go is just to do the cut and the weld but honing out some holes is a pretty simplistic way to do it. Uh, cutting this whole thing and lining it all back up again, depending on your fab skills and what you want to do, you make the call, but this is an option that I decided to go with. Um, so I'm just going to do a little bit of weld on here, make that a little bit of a stronger hole, and um, get the transmission back in. So this thing, so I did a little small notch on the bandsaw because it, it drops down on the curve here. So now that could just go in like that. I'll put these clips over so it's a bit of a lock and then you can see how it'll now line up with the furthest edge. Also gives you sort of a spot where you can see where I've got to weld some stuff back in to make it a more solid mount. So yeah, I'm just gonna uh, get to the welding part. So I just wanted to do a quick shot of this before I put it back in, but you can see how I did notching. I just uh, drilled a hole where it lined up then just took a die grinder and grinded it out. It's not the most beautiful job in the world, but you're never really gonna see it. But anyways, that's what I did. Now I'm gonna try and mount it all. So another fun thing you'll run into is because you've moved it back, of course your clearances have changed. And so this throw is going to hit. It doesn't hit now, and apparently it only has to go up a little bit to make the clearance, but I still have to go up another inch and it will hit. So it does have to go up a wee bit. Now, people say they are able to do this in the car all together. Uh, I don't even know how you'd swing a hammer. But I could probably put a punch or I guess use uh, something on my hammer drill. But um, yeah, let's see where this goes. Yeah, so here's another interesting one. Hitting the floor and making some room for the counterweight on the shift linkage uh, is a maybe. <laughs> so my car, just so you guys know, is a 2008 um, Carrera C2S, so 997.1, and it is a Canadian original bought and sold car. I'm giving you those details because this is the maybe situation I'm talking about. For some cars, uh, you may have to hit the floor to make clearance for that counterweight. Do not cut the counterweight off. So some people decide to just cut it off. That is uh, not a good idea. I would not do that. If you want to, go ahead, but I would not do that. Um, other cars, the counterweight will hit the floor and you have to massage it. My car, I didn't. After I got everything bolted up in place, uh, I tried the clearances and unless you really kind of swing it, it might slightly touch, but that's not even within the shift points on the cable. So um, it doesn't hit, so I didn't have to do it. I did check in with um, CPE. They said it depends. Some cars do, some cars don't. So I don't know if it's the year, if it's because it's a C2S, if it's a Canadian car. I don't know what the reason is, but you may or may not have to do this part. So anyways, uh, I would just say trial and error, fit it up. If you don't have to do it, don't bother if you do. Drop it down, you're gonna to have to get in there with an air chisel or something and kind of knock it up a bit. And it's like probably, you know, eighth of an inch. Very, it's very small clearance you'd have to make with it. So anyways, let's get back at it. So one other thing to note is the battery cable has this clip that this attaches onto. It's like a metal clamp and it goes on the, um, the cross brace. Uh, the thing is, when you move it back, where the cross brace is, is it will hit this rat hose. 
So if you don't bend it up out of the way or cut it off, you are going to end up with it rubbing on this rat hose and you will get a massive coolant leak at some point in the future. So bend it up and then you can either just relocate this clip or maybe even zap strap that clip up there instead after you kind of line up your battery cables. But be careful that you make sure you do that or else leaky leaky. Okay, job done with relocating it. Uh, now you can see the brackets here, the blocks are on the front. So it did go back a significant amount because the blocks used to be on this side, the plates used to be on this side. So, you know, it moved the engine back an inch and a half. Doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're looking at these clearances, it's tight and now it's way more serviceable, which is great. Uh, so that's what we were kind of going for. Um, now I've got more clearance for the water pump and um, I can probably do a better design on my airbox. Than I want. Anyway, yeah, so cool. Um, as you can see with the video, it did make it go back a significant amount. Uh, I am planning on designing my own airbox, which will retain all of the um, sort of factory deck lid without doing any cutting or modification. I want to keep the original one with the power. I don't want to go with a wing, just the style I'm going with. If you're going to go aftermarket deck lid and you're cool just cutting it up, then, you know, go nuts. But um, I'm going to be designing something completely different, uh, something that looks a little bit more stock and, again, retains all the functionality. Uh, so literally every eighth of an inch is important for what I'm trying to do for clearances. Uh, I wish I had known this before I had started because I would have done it to begin with. When I originally fit the motor and I was trying to fit the water pump, um, I did have to do some extra cutting into the support bracket, which I could have used for supporting my airbox. Um, but whatever, live and learn. It's not a tremendous impact to the world. And I just ended up giving myself even more clearance when everything's all done. So it is what it is. Um, but I would say that this is definitely something I would strongly recommend, if not say required, um, just to give you that extra space because the, the space is pretty precious um, towards the back. Also, you could argue um, it does allow you to get more center mass and have the engine sticking out less out the back. I know it's only an inch and a half, but it's an inch and a half and that's where the weight is. So it does give you a better um, center balancing. Um, some of the things I heard about was what about axle angles? Um, from my understanding, uh, CPE does this on all their cars. They've had no problems with it before with track applications and everything else. The axles are made to have some fairly extreme angles, just given the fact of how everything kind of works with the suspension geometry in a rear engine car. Um, so people didn't have a concern there. Uh, some of the other things that people have done have like been completely cutting the bracket and re-welding it, uh, re-welding the sides. Uh, you know, again, I took the, the more notched approach. I have a welder, I could have done it that way, um, but I had the engine in the car already. And to do it properly, I would have wanted to pull the whole thing out again so I could fabricate the bracket properly. I didn't feel I could do a good enough job with the fabrication and get it right. Um, also, it just felt like cutting the bracket and rewelding it again does potentially impact structural integrity. Of course, if you get good penetration and everything else, you know, it's kind of a moot point. But uh, I decided to try to go with the notch approach um, like other people had. Uh, it's a simple die grinder. If you don't have a welder, then, you know, maybe that's the way to go for you. You can go the same way. Anyways, it was frustrating to find out. Uh, hopefully this helps you so you do it ahead of time so you don't have that frustration I had. I am glad I did it. So um, anyways, happy motoring, stay safe. I'll see you on the next one. I'm gonna talk about the plumbing for all the hoses I got, um, which um, don't have any instructions or anything like that, but I figured out how I'm gonna do the hose routing the way I want. Um, so do check that one out when I post it. Anyways, take it easy. Like, subscribe, all those things help. Peace out.